Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we have another Forsaken television series pilot. It's from 1957, and the title of the pilot is El Coyote, and it stars gymnast Muriel Davis. And there's George Brent, comic relief from Billy Gilbert, that great bad guy Paul Richards, and even an appearance as one of the henchmen by that legendary stuntman, Lauren James. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. We'll see you after the show. El Coyote. Brought to you by... pages of Spanish legend comes El Coyote. Who is this Spanish? Is it a myth? A fairy tale? Is it a male descendant of one of the great Spanish dons? Or is it a girl? George Brent as Colonel Bart Edwards, a father faced with the problems of bringing up a teenager in the raw, untamed West. I wish I were a boy. If I were a boy, you and I could take on the whole town. Well, thanks be to heaven you're not a boy. I have enough problems as it is. Thank you. premises before sundown on Friday, June 17. That is tomorrow. Howdy, Sheriff. Thought you were in Yuma. Just leaving. Where's your dad? Over having coffee with the widow Randall? Could be. Pretty strong stuff. I told your father there was no way I could back him up on this. Man, oh man, Bart is really asking for trouble. Sometimes I think you forget you retired from the army. You no longer have a company of soldiers at your back, Colonel. My dear Widow Randall, it has been said that the pen is mightier than the sword. It's nothing to joke about. I was talking to the sheriff yesterday. He says that Logan's got the papers to back up his claim. You know, that's something I can't understand. The church has had that land grant for years. Well, the Padre hasn't been able to find it. Evidently, it's been mislaid. Mm-hmm. Or stolen. Why would anyone steal it? The grant's no good to anyone unless the Padre signs it over to them. Bart, isn't this all something for the law to decide? Honey, the press and the law have been at odds before. And sometimes the press has even proven the law wrong. Well, I don't want to see anything happen to you. Some of the boys in the Wild Bunch came over here to the hotel to see Logan last night. Hey, you got to know somebody personal to get a cup of coffee around here? That is a pretty good little newspaper you got in this town, lady. You read uh, Colonel Edwards' editorial this morning? To the Mexican citizens of Coyote Springs, pay no attention to eviction notices. Harvey Logan's claims will be proved invalid. Your own church grants issued almost 100 years will protect you. Do not be frightened by this vulture and his wild bunch of rats trying to steal your land. My, my. 
Now, I thought I told you once before, I don't like crowding. And if I didn't, well, I'm telling you now. You want to play rough, I'll play rough. Maybe I didn't tell you, but I don't like threats, Mr. Logan. And if I didn't tell you, I'm telling you now. Now, that's pretty big talk for a newspaper man who doesn't carry a gun. Look here. You got any doubts about my claims? Why don't you ride into Tucson and check on them yourself, huh? You know, I just might do that. Well, now you're getting smart. Only you better do it fast, because come sundown tomorrow, I'm taking over. Say, I'll give you one more piece of information, gratis. If the Wild Bunch ever rides on this town, this isn't going to be a very healthy place for you or anybody else in your family to live in. I told you a moment ago I don't like threats. And if you ever mention my daughter again, I'll kill you. You, know, you, you shouldn't make sudden moves like that because my boys there, they get nervous. Get up! You don't think they'll do anything to Jane, do you? Newspaper fella. Don't you think she delivered enough of those papers? My paper, Miss Jane. Sorry, Granny. No more deliveries today. Hey, what's the hurry, General Grant? Let go of that bridle. We better let her go, boys. Her father's liable to write something nasty about us in the newspaper. I said let go. Get out of my way. Come on, Red. Let her go. Can't you see she's in a hurry? Yeah, let's give her a send-off. <laughs> I've never seen riding like this since the days of El Coyote. El Coyote. Ay, mi madre. Sad times in Carpenera. And Dad wrote the best editorial. See, si, I know. He told us not to give up our homes. But what can we do? A handful of women and children and fat old men. But Manuel, you've got to fight. If you don't, you're going to lose everything. People come to me. They say, tell us what to do. What can I tell them? I need someone to tell me what to do. If only El Coyote was with us again. Oh, Manuel, this is no time for fairy tales. You think El Coyote is a fairy tale, eh? I know he's a fairy tale. Why, everyone in this part of town has told me about the great Spanish legend. El Coyote, defender of the weak and helpless. He was defender. <laughs> You hurt myself. El Coyote was the greatest horseman in the country. The greatest horseman in the world. El Coyote could hold back a hundred men with his flashing sword. He could hold back a thousand. For El Coyote, there was only one way to climb a balcony. No, don't go up here. No, no, it's too high. No, no, Jane. Sometimes you see him swing at you on a rope. No. Sometimes he comes swinging at you without a rope. Let's be honest. There was always a rope. Manuel. I know, and you know. El Coyote is a legend. He never lived. There you are wrong, little muchacha. He lived. 
I, Manuel Fernandez Ricardo de Vega, saw him. Where? Right here in this very blacksmith shop. I used to hide there in the dark and watch my father shoe his horses. I was only a little fella, but no one had to tell me I was looking at El Coyote. One night, he ran in here very fast. He was hurt bad. He took off his suit. My father gave him clothes so no one would recognize him. Then he ran out of that door. We never see him again. Are you sure you didn't dream that? You don't believe me? Come, I'll show you something. No one ever see this but you, James. El Coyote. His shirt. My people loved the man who wore these things. He wasn't a very big man. There you are wrong. A man's bigness is in his heart. And El Coyote's heart was big enough for all of us. It gives me strange feeling to see someone in that mask again. El Coyote? Maria, Maria, ven! El Coyote! He has come to save our home. Come, we must tell everyone. <laughs> particular reason you can't ever use the front door? Dad, do you know what just happened to me? Some of those ornery, no good, snake calling uh, enough now, see here, young lady. That's very unsuitable language. They threw all my papers in the horse trough. Ruined all your papers? Didn't you deliver any of them? About five or six. Why? Those ornery, no good... Snake crawling varmints. That's what I said. Well, yeah, and you're absolutely right, but you've... You've got to find more ladylike words to cover the subject. If I ever run into them again, I'll... Oh, just forget it, honey. You leave this to me. Leave this to you? This is my fight. Your fight? Janie, little girls don't fight. You know, sometimes when I look at you, I wonder if I was terribly wrong, terribly selfish, to keep you with me after your mother died. Dad, don't say that. I'll try to be more ladylike. Honest, I will. Good. Now I've got to hurry and get packed. Did I hear you say you're going to get packed? What on earth for, Dad? I'm riding over to Tucson. I want to investigate Logan's claim. Great. I'll be ready in three shakes. Well, that's a great beginning. And speaking of ladies, you're going to put on a dress. A dress? To ride to Tucson? You're not riding to Tucson. You're going over to the mission and stay with Father Gomez. Why? Because I say so. I don't want to be worried about you. That, now, look, Jane, that's an order. You're going to put on a dress, you're going over to the mission, and you're leaving by the front door. Well, there's your Spanish land grant. Now imagine leaving an important piece of paper like that just laying around in an old mission where anybody could come along and borrow it. Boss, just saw Edwards ride out of town like you said. You left that girl of his over at the Padres. What do you tell? Good, she might come in handy. What's gonna happen when Edwards gets back and tells the whole town the land office in Tucson ain't never heard of Harvey Logan? You know, you guys got no brains at all. You see, in order for a man to get back from some place first, he got to get there. Is that right? Yeah. See what you mean. Man traveling alone in this country, not a gun could get himself hurt. That's right, Zach. Now, why don't you pick up Red and the two of you go and escort Colonel Edwards um, part of the way? Yeah, I get it. Part of the way. Manuel, what are you saying? It is true. 
two of the wild bunch come into my blacksmith shop, and while I am getting their horses, I hear them say they are going to kill Senor Bart. Oh, you must be mistaken. No, no, it's no mistake. Did you tell the sheriff? I couldn't find him. Then I must get to Dan and warn him. He didn't even wear a gun. But your father wouldn't want you to do anything so dangerous. Besides, look how you are dressed. You are a girl. That's right, Manuel. I'm a girl. If only I were a boy. Oh, if you were a boy, that would be different. <laughs> Suppose I were a Mexican boy. Suppose I wore boys' clothes and covered my face so that no one knew me. Not even my dad. Well, if you were a Mexican boy, th that would be all right. Uh, then you could cover your face and I would get you a Mexican saddle. And then you could... you could... No, you couldn't. Come on, Manuel. There's no time to lose. I saw him. He has come back to help us. Si, sí, Manuel. It was El Coyote. He come back to help us. Si. Sí, that was El Coyote. <laughs>
guys stay here. Come on, Kruger. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Now, Padre, is that any way to greet a man that's bringing you good news? You mean our people will not have to leave their homes? Well, that all depends. I will do anything to save my people from unhappiness. Hey, it gives me the willies. Well, what are you worried about? It's just a coyote. Now, Padre, if you just sign my little paper there, well, your people can stay right in their homes tonight. That thing sounds like it's in the backyard. Kruger, go put it out of its misery. I don't see no coyotes out here, boss. I cannot sign this. This is not your title. This is the original grant stolen from the church. You know, Padre, I was hoping that you weren't going to be difficult. I was hoping you weren't going to force me to use other methods. Kruger, go bring the Padre's guest down here. You wouldn't hurt a young girl. That all depends on you. Uh, uh. Who's out there? El coyote le cuida esto, padre. What's that kid doing here? Get it!
is, Sheriff. That jail of yours ought to keep him cool for a long time. Yeah, along with the rest of his gang. My boys are rounding him up now. I sure owe you an apology, Colonel. I should have been in on this ruckus. It's all right, Sheriff. I started this fight, and I wanted to finish it. I'm sure she's all right. She's been very quiet. Jane! Just a minute. Dad, I thought you were in Tucson. Didn't you hear all the commotion? Commotion? Yes. Padre, somebody leave this for you. El Coyote. El Coyote. You know, if I hadn't seen him with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. Great kid. Manuel, you better keep this. He'll probably be coming back this way. Dad, you'd like to have a son like that, wouldn't you? Honey, I wouldn't exchange my daughter for anything in the whole world. didn't make it into a series. Kids would have loved it, especially the little girls. With Muriel being a teenage female Zorro type character, and what stunts and action. My name's Bob Terry. We hope you'll join us again here next time on the Forsaken Westerns. Have a great day. <laughs>